What's up everybody? I actually am um, making this video for a customer of mine. He, um, he's a nice fellow. He's from the United Kingdom. Of course, you know, I'm from America. New York. I'm from New York. Um, but anyway, who cares where I'm from, right? So anyway, um, the guy really wanted to get a good overview or an explanation about all these pin switches. This fellow, he was a unique customer. He actually had three vehicles that he wanted to put security systems on. Uh, first and most important one, of course, was his boat, and he wanted to know what can I put on my boat, or what would you put on your own boat, which I actually do own a boat, and I can tell him from experience what works best. Uh, what would what would he suggest to get to protect that cabin of that boat? Also, for his car, and lastly, he had a work truck, like a big cube truck, or you know, uh, you know, the big box in the back with the two big doors, and he had a barn door and a side and all that. So we had a lot of different needs as far as what kind of switches he needed for all three of his different applications, one much different than the other, for sure. So um, I said, you know what, man, I do have a lot of stuff. I know it's overwhelming when you go to the site and you see all the different parts that we have. You know, it's cool to go on there and see a picture of what it is, but really, what is it and can how's it going to fit? You know, how's it going to work for me? So uh, here I am. Here's the stuff I'm going to start showing you. I'll start with the most simple and most elemental stuff that you're going to find on just about any alarm out there. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with these. This here is just a, um, it's a plastic inside, metal, metal outside case pin switch. Non-adjustable, except for these um, nuts right there. So if you had, you know, say... Um, a hood and you wanted to raise it to match the hood but you know you want it to come down about a half an inch or yay much whatever you could adjust it here put it inside lock the lock nut underneath there connect it to your alarms uh, ground input and there you go that's a wrap so this would be of course the regular everyday joe you know kind of pin switch now we got this one too which is another kind of pin switch this is actually called a european pin switch these you'll find on European, Japanese, and Korean cars. You can see there's a little me metal tab there which wraps around the back and makes a connection to the back end of the pin switch. It's a single pole. And these little nips or nipples, whatever you want to call them, these you could actually cut to adjust. So if your door closes only about an eighth of an inch, you just want to cut that first one, file off the top, make it look nice, nice, and then screw it in there. And there you go, there's your pin switch. So these are actually pretty cool. A lot of people don't even know about these, but these are European pin switches. We sell them. Um, probably don't sell as many as we should, just because people don't even know that they exist. But this is called a European pin switch. So if you're looking for a cool pin switch, and by the way, it's actually all plastic, which is good. Stuff like this, as nice as they are, these things do have a tendency, they can you try hard enough you can bend these things they can break and over time stress these things can pop out and the spring goes fling and you know that's the end of that and you buy yourself another one this one of course is spring loaded but I can tell you from experience that the inside spring is a lot more heavy duty and a lot more less susceptible to damage than these types of pin switches so European pin switch pretty cool now you got of course the brackets if you're not drilling the hole this is called a side angle or right angle uh, pin switch mount, which you can put two self tappers and you can adjust it accordingly. Mount your pin switch inside. All these are universal, they screw into each other. Except when you're doing videos to show people they work perfectly. Oh, okay. Of course. Murphy's Law, right? So, anyway, that's a 90 degree. This here is a universal type of pin switch bracket same kind of thing a lot bigger you can cut this you know with a cutoff wheel or you can just take this and you could actually bend it what I used to do is I used to take them put them in a vice grip bang them down with a hammer get the um, desired angle and I would mount this bend that tab down to how I need it to be and that's a pretty you know these are cheap these are like a quarter or I think or something 30 cents we sell these things for but that's a pretty universal bracket pretty much summarize the regular pin switches now moving on that's what you need to get by the way my man for the uh, cube van you're gonna need to invest in a whole bunch of those now as far as your boat that's a totally different story 
for your boat, what I would recommend is two things. I am not a big fan of, you know, once the alarm goes off, it's, it's already late because the damage has probably occurred. Okay, if somebody breaks your window, what good is having a glass sensor if your window's broken? So, you know, for a car alarm, if you wanted to keep these idiots away before they start breaking your car, I would recommend getting something called a radar sensor or a proximity sensor, some, some companies call them. So when you, you're walking up to the vehicle, whatever the vehicle may be, it'll issue one-away chirps prior to them getting up to the, the car very close. And God forbid if you had your window open, you, you had your wallet sitting down your, on your seat and you're actually at the beach enjoying yourself and some morons trying to steal your wallet, it has a second independently adjustable zone. So when you reach your hand in the window, boom, it's going to go off. And then if you really want to be you know, a winner, tie it into a window roll up and break the knucklehead's arm off so that way his arm stays in your car and you know, let him bleed to death. Um, but as far as a boat goes, um, I'll get to this switch in a second. This is what I want to talk about first. I'll let this webcam focus. Okay. I use this here on my boat. I use it for a couple reasons. One, there's nothing in here to rust. As you can see, it is a plastic encased type of switch. This is very similar to what you'd have on a home alarm. So that way, if you had your window, you would have one end of the contact which stays open. And then when the window is opened, it, can, it conducts a ground in here, completes the circuit, and, and triggers the alarm system. This is invaluable for like a back door of a, of a boat because on a boat, you're gonna usually on the inside there's like a little latch you have to unlock it and then you push open the door so when that occurs this is gonna work for you this is gonna work extremely well so door closed door open boom your alarm's going off get a winner chicken dinner right there this is good for a boat and also it's got this little adhesive tape so you know drilling that's also good I don't I'm not a big fan of drilling if you can avoid drilling holes in anything I'm all for that because if you're like me or most guys, you know, today you got yourself a, you know, a 21 foot, and next next year you next thing you know you got a 29 foot in your driveway, then you're still not happy. Then you get a 38 foot. Okay, so anyway, let's just make pretend you had that on the back back door of your boat. Now this thing didn't work, or the alarm, the uh, the thief actually just rolled up the curtain, jumped over the back door. Now he's in your boat. Uh oh. Okay. Well, again, that radar sensor, which is another video. That would help but this here also unless this guy is spider-man he's not going to walk on the walls this is called a contact switch or a pressure switch so once you get in there and this applies general pressure it's going to close the switch and it's actually going to make your alarm go off now i happen to know that this fella actually owns a sea ray boat a sea ray is very similar to the one i own which is made by bayline it's, it's, it's um same manufacturer so on the back there's a big door which opens up and that's where your engine bay is located. This would be a very cool thing to have underneath there where the two lips close up so that way you can't see it but it's actually there. And he, and he can never get to this to, to uh, disarm it because he can never even get his eyes on it. Most people wouldn't even know it's even there. Or if you even saw it, you wouldn't even know what the heck it is. So a contact or a pressure switch such as this, real good choice. Real good. You can put, put as many of these things on there as you want. So you could put them under carpets, you could put them wherever, man. I mean, that, look how skinny that thing is. It's like nothing. So, contact switch. And now we're going to go back to his vehicle. Now, if you have in your vehicle, uh, you work with like ladders or you work with heavy types of tools, saws, stuff like that, um, you're probably you know, flinging stuff around, you got guys working for you, you know, you know how those guys are, they're all nuts. What you might want to invest in is something like this. This is called a contact switch. So what, what it is, is when these two are joined together, they apply pressure and it keeps that open. The door, of course, is opened. It's going to open up those two pins and it's going to ground to whatever the alarm is. And these are two pin. We only sell these right now in a two pin. They used to have four and five pins for power windows, power locks, which were pretty cool, but they're super hard for me to find right now. But once in a while, you could check the site if you're looking for them. They do come along every now and then. Um, 
but you know that's you know that's that's that um, but anyway Contact switches are nice. They're a little bit difficult to install just because there's a rather large hole that you have to drill. You have to be pretty, you have to be pretty good with a Dremel or whatever tool you're using, a rotary tool to finesse these things in there. But the good news is that there really isn't any parts in here to really break. Um, they are pretty stealth and it, they, these will last. I can tell you that these will last. Whenever I've installed these, I've never seen them come back with people complaining that they broke, they busted, they, they nothing. They just work. So contact switches, sliding door contact switches are also nice. These are actually AU40s if you're gonna buy, buy some of these things from us. They're on our site. They come with a template. They come with all the hardware. Stainless hardware at that, which is good. So that, that should be a good indicator of the quality that we're selling, not some ching ching ting, ching chang ting tang, whatever crap. And one of my favorites is these. This here is an Omega AU46. This is a mercury switch, and basically the premise of this is you mount this to a ground, such as a, a trunk. If you don't have a trunk light, you would screw this in with a self-tapping screw and maybe a lock washer, and you would just adjust it. You can bend this, so that way when the hood is down, you can see that mercury, maybe you can't. I'm going to try to show you. There's a bowl of mercury. I can see it, but I don't know if you can. But basically you can see it rolling around in there. Now, of course, that sealed ball of mercury within that plastic housing could never break or ever become brittle under any circumstance. Mercury switches are a fail-safe. I definitely recommend these for hoods, trunks, stuff like that. These are actually really good. They're pretty cheap. You know, we sell these things for around 7 or 8 bucks. The cheap ones are around 5 But, you know, spend the money. Buy a brand name. Something like this. I like these. This is the AU46. We have a a DEI 8617 but I'm not a big fan of DEI you know we sell it uh, but unfortunately I can't stand Viper I, I never could but uh, Omega so I'm gonna go for you guys Omega that's what I would get so that's pretty much it you know you got your pin switches we went over the um, the magnetic switches the pressure switches the sliding door contact switches and a mercury switch I think that pretty much summarizes all of the non-electrical type of switches that we carry and sell on a day-to-day -day basis those are the hot sellers um, eventually i probably will get around to doing another set of videos just basically doing radar sensors proximity sensors shock sensors pressure sens uh, switches audio sensors all these other kinds of things uh, stuff that's specialized for people that live on hills and can't use stuff like mercury switches because their alarm would be triggering falsely um, stuff for neutral safety switches which would probably be a good idea for some people but stay tuned but for right now um, I hope you got anything out of this information I shared with you until next time we'll see you